Hi, it's Sue from Everyday Artisan again, and I'm back to show you the video of the two things I like to do with a DIY kit before I start stitching. I am not a trained sewer, so I tend to make mistakes. And so for me, it's important to have a copy of the pattern and a copy of the stencil just in case I need to make a mistake and cut another piece or try to refashion something um, because there's always a chance that I'm going to do something wrong. But with Alabama Shannon garments, sometimes the something's wrongs are the best parts. But it's always good to be prepared. And if you want to be super prepared, you can always buy a copy of the pattern or a copy of the stencil on the Alabama Channing website. And it's gonna be a lot more precise, a lot more exact. This is getting close, <laughs> if you will. And actually with the pattern, I like to make a copy because sometimes, like in this case, when I bought the cropped car coat, I bought it in a medium, thinking it was kind of boxy. Sometimes I wear large, I've got really big shoulders, as you can tell in my Ezra jacket. Um, but the cropped coat looked kind of boxy. So I thought I could probably get away with a medium. I thought a large might be too boxy. So what I'm thinking about doing is before I even start stitching in on the cropped car coat, I'm thinking about making, getting some old t-shirts or I've got some old uh, cotton jersey fabric. And I'm thinking about making, cutting out a copy of the pattern cutting out the pattern on some of the older fabric, sewing it together, and seeing how I like it, if I need to make any adjustments anywhere. So I'm gonna start showing you how I go about cutting out a pattern. If I were a professional sewer, I would probably be doing this on pattern paper, but it's not something I kept around, and the first time I did this, I realized, hey, I had an old thing of muslin laying around. So why don't I just make my pattern out of muslin? And since I've done that a few times, I just went ahead and ran with it because now I have a kind of a collection of patterns out of the muslin, if you will. So the first thing I do is lay my pieces out. In this particular case, I'm laying out the pencil skirt, which is real easy. It's three pieces. And I actually made a video before this one, but in my YouTube, <laughs> infancy, if you will, um, didn't realize it was sleeting outside, and then you guys weren't going to be able to hear a word I said over the sound of the sleet. And actually now I've turned off all my air, or all my heat and everything else in the hopes that you can hear this well. So I would lay out my pieces, and when you're doing an Alabama Shannon piece, whenever you're laying it out, you do a lot of smoothing out. So I smooth out my pieces on my piece of muslin, and then I take a Sharpie, making sure I have something underneath. This is my dining room table, so I don't want to accidentally have a bunch of Sharpie on it. So in this case, I have a little cutting board underneath. And I just trace around the piece. I already did the front pencil skirt piece, but just to show you what it would look like, just literally, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. When I go back and cut I usually cut off the Sharpie lines. So the Sharpie lines are just a tiny bit outside of the actual line itself. Sometimes I get a little wonky, I go back through and make sure I know where the line should be. And then before I go about cutting, oh, this one's getting tricky. So you can see, or you probably can't see because it's so far away <laughs> and so light. Um, now I have a piece that I will cut out in muslin. Again, it will just look like this and so I can lay it down on some new fabric. On this case, I've marked it pencil skirt front large. I've marked the grain line and I've marked where I need to place it on the fold to be able to make a cut. So now I know if I accidentally cut something wrong, if I feel like I need to um, 
make a mock-up and cheaper fabric before I start working on the beautiful Alabama fam Channing fabric I can. And I've actually already done it for the whole cropped coat. You can see, you know what, maybe I'll do, I don't know, like here's the pocket. You can see I've got all the different markings on. I do it on every single piece. This one says cut two tops, cut two bottoms. I didn't write that on my pencil skirt, so we'll need to go back and do that. So now I feel a little more confident um, that if I were to cut a hole in something, I could probably cut another piece of the back or something like that. So that is the first thing I do is cut a copy of the pattern. And then the next thing I do is cut a copy of the stencil. Now normally, um, normally, on several of the other kits I've bought, the there's a lot of high contrast between the stencil and the um, fabric. And so I can lay it down on, I have a light box that I inherited. Um, I can lay it down on the light box and put a little piece of tracing paper over top of it and see. Now when I uh, go over the stencil, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to work, be exactly the same as Alabama Channons. If you want that, go on their website and buy them. They're totally worth it. Um, whoop, brain fart. Um, I have to cut out the middle of this, aren't I? Yes. So, to get in on the tartan stencil, I started by getting my ruler out and measuring, okay, each one of these little pieces is an eighth of an inch. And I was like, okay, Let's see if I can draw it out. You know what, I'm gonna get a piece of graph paper to draw this on. Maybe having those lines is gonna make sure I do it all easy. And then when I measured graph paper, of all things, it's the exact same sizes as the tartan stencil. So as you might be able to see, I went ahead and did, colored in all of what the stencil would look like. Now, probably at this point, I should have taken just this piece of graph paper and use my little X-Acto knife and cut it out and used this kind of as the basis for making my stencil. But I was like, well, if it's a quarter of an inch, I can just go through and mark up my pennant felt and work on it that way. And so that's what I did. And give me a second here. First of all, know that this pennant felt is fantastic stuff. I actually purchased this online from Alabama Channon, got three yards, I believe. And I like to grab all kinds of different stencils to do fun things. Um, a good example of something that I did was I grabbed a stencil from my alma mater, Go Who's, and changed it up a little bit. I think I changed down here, you know, trademark, you don't ever want to copy anything exactly. Um, but then I made this and I put it on a tote bag put it on a t-shirt for my son who's now going to, my, to UVA. So um, I love having pennant felt around to grab any kind of shape I want. And in this particular case, you can see I've gotten started on my tartan. It was just a matter of using the ruler and measuring out lines, both vertically and horizontally, and then going over it with my X-Acto knife. Um, as you could well imagine, like I've probably put three, four hours into this. My hand starts aching using the X-Acto knife and cutting it out. And this is as far as I've gotten. So if you really, really like a stencil, purchasing the Mylar stencil from Alabama Channon is the way to go because this is a pretty arduous process. Um, and then to boot, I go back through and realize as I measure this, it doesn't measure up exactly. This stencil I'm creating is a little bit larger in scale than that on my kit. So 
Fortunately, I'm not really worried about that. I don't, the only project I have in mind um, that I may want to use this stencil for is I have the Alabama Channon pants pattern. And what I'm thinking about doing is creating a pair of pants to go with my suit. And, excuse me, I'm thinking about making a pair of pants to go with my suit. And the pants, I was thinking about doing a tuxedo stripe of just little squares down the side. Um, so this would come in handy for that. Scale doesn't really matter, but if scale matters, if perfection matters, buy the stencil. So those are the two things that I do before I even start stitching on my kit. And in the meantime, I have a fun idea that I'm gonna test out some different techniques on the stitch sampler. And I'm gonna turn the stitch sampler into a tote bag. I've got a couple uh, blog posts on my website where I've shown you I've done that a couple times. I think the UVA tote bag is on there as well. Um, but I thought that would be fun to have a tote bag to match the coat, to match the skirt, and maybe even the pants if I eventually get that far. Um, so my next video will be all about how I'm going to make the tote bag. So I really thank you for joining me today. Again, check out my Instagram, check out my blog. I think most of my stuff is on my blog, but I'm really uh, enjoying going on this journey with you guys. So thanks for joining me. All right, bye.